This is a tutorial video for Webplot Digitizer. Webplot Digitizer is an online tool for extraction of numerical data from images of plots, maps, and other images. This can work on a variety of plots such as line graphs, scatter plots, polar diagrams, and ternary diagrams. This can also be used to make simple distance and angle measurements in an image. Webplot Digitizer is an online and free to use tool. Just visit the website and click on the launch app button on the side. Once the app starts, you are ready to specify the image. You can either choose the load image option under the file menu, or you can also simply just drag and drop your favorite image. If you're using Google Chrome, then you can also use keyboard shortcuts like Ctrl C, Ctrl V to copy paste an image from your favorite PDF viewer like Adobe Acrobat. In this tutorial, I will begin with a simple 2D XY plot and then move on to more complicated cases and other kinds of plots like polar diagrams and ternary diagrams. Once the image is loaded, select the axis type. In this case, we have a 2D XY plot. Click Align. In the next step, we have to select four points, two on the x-axis and two on the y-axis. This is required by the software to align the pixels of the image to the actual x and y values on the plot. Click Proceed. You can pick any two points on the x or the y-axis, but generally you want to select the points that are furthest apart for maximum accuracy. You can also use the keyboard cursor keys for finer control and shift and cursor will help you move points a little bit faster. So on the x-axis I have selected 0 and 6 and on y I'm selecting minus 1 and 1. You can also come back and fix the points if needed. Once you're satisfied, click complete. Next specify the values at the points that you have selected. Here we selected 0, 6 and minus 1 and 1 on the y-axis. If either X or Y axis is log scale, then check the appropriate checkbox. You can also specify dates as the values here. They have to be specified in a specific format in year, month, date, or just year, month format. You can also enter values as exponents, for, such as for 10 to the power minus three, just enter one E minus three. Just make sure not to enter the char character because that is not allowed. You should now see a set of controls appear on the right side. Also notice that under the zoomed in view, there are these two numbers that change as you hover over the image. These two numbers reflect the actual data value, X and Y values under the mouse pointer. So for example, at four and zero, this number should roughly show four and zero. If this, these numbers are not correct, then you can always go back and define axis and redo the axis calibration till you get it right. Now these controls on the right are the ones you will be using for the data extraction. There are two modes of data extraction, manual and automatic. You can use the button on the top to switch between these two modes at any point. The manual mode is very straightforward. In, the ma in this mode, you can add, remove or adjust data points on an individual basis. Click on add points to start, start clicking on the points along the curve. So in this case, if you're interested in the orange curve, just go click along the curve itself. You can also adjust the position of these points after selection by choosing the select points option. And you can use your keyboard cursor keys and adjust the point location. There are also other keyboard shortcuts available to help this process. The points here can also be deleted by clicking on delete points and clicking on the points that you want to remove. You can also remove all the points together by clicking on clear points. Once you're satisfied with the points, click on view data to view the actual data that you have collected. I will return to this dialog box and explain these controls in a bit. Now the manual mode can get very tedious for large number of data points. And so you might want to switch to the automatic mode. The automatic mode requires a few inputs to identify the useful region of the image and also the color of the features that you're interested in. In the first section called mask, use the box pen and erase tools to just paint on the region that you are interested in. So if you want to trace the orange curve, just paint this yellow color on the curve. Since this is the only orange feature in this image, we can make a box over the entire section. 
we don't need to be very precise. If there are other curves with similar colors and you want to be very precise and use the pen tool, you can adjust the thickness of the tool here. You can also erase things as needed. After specifying the mask, move on to the next section to specify the color of the curve. Click on the change color button to select the color. In this dialog, you will be presented with some options that the software has detected automatically. You can also enter the RGB values directly or use the color picker and click on the curve that you're interested in. For multicolored curves, you can switch to the background mode and specify the background color instead. What that will do is just use the background color as, as a basis to differentiate the color of the curves. To test the color selection, you can click on the filter colors button. Now you can see that the mask that we had painted shows up as dark gray and the color that we had selected shows up in the yellow region. You can change the value of this distance number to increase and decrease the range of colors that are detected. A higher number will also select some other colors on the side. In some cases, you will have to reduce the default value or increase depending on the color distribution in the image. Once you're satisfied with the colors, you can move on to the next section to select the automatic extraction algorithm. There are a few options available and the averaging window algorithm is the default algorithm and this is usually the one that you will end up using. There are two parameters in this case, delta x, delta y. To start off, just leave them at the default values and click run. You will notice that in this case, the extraction algorithm actually did a pretty good job. But in some cases, you will have to adjust these parameters to increase or decrease the spacing between the detected points. For thicker plots, you usually want to increase this number. And for thin plots, you might want to decrease the, number, the two numbers here. You can also always go back to the manual mode and make fine adjustments to specific points if they don't look quite right. And you can all come back to the automatic mode whenever you want. The other algorithm that is available is called the X step with interpolation algorithm. This algorithm gives you better control over the data points that are actually detected. Here you can specify the minimum and maximum values of the X axis points and also the step size of which specifies the spacing between these data points. You can also specify the minimum maximum Y values in between which the data points will be detected. There's also a smoothing parameter to smooth over some noisy data or also useful when you have large discontinuous blobs of data. This is usually the percentage of the delta x step. So 100% smoothing would mean that it will take plus and minus delta x around the point as the average value. So to start off similar to the averaging window, just leave the numbers at the default values and click run. And if you're not satisfied, adjust the numbers as necessary. The x step with interpolation algorithm is particularly good for discontinuous data points like the blue dotted curve here. Since this uses cubic splines for interpolation, it can also detect points in between the colored regions. So for example, if we switch over to the blue curve, we can see the data points have been selected even in between the discontinuous regions. Once you're satisfied with the data points, click on the view data button to view the data points. Here there are some controls available to change the formatting of these numbers. You can also change the column separator in between these two columns. For example, you can use backslash T to enter a tab or you can go back to comma for a comma separated values file. You can also sort this data by X, Y, or the connectivity of these points. The nearest neighbor data point is useful if you want to sort the data along a curve. For example, for a circular path, the sorting data by X or Y axis does not make much sense. And you might want to follow the curve and choose the next nearest neighbor after every data point. So just select the nearest neighbor option in that case. 
down here we also have a few controls to select all the data from here you can also copy paste into your favorite spreadsheet program you can also download the data as a .csv file you can also send the data to plotly which is a online data analysis and plotting tool uh, for more details i recommend visiting plotly website once you're completed click close in many images you will have multiple data sets in an image for example in this plot we have orange blue and the green curves so in this case you might want to just keep clearing the data and starting over but sometimes it might be more convenient to actually use the data set manager in this case so you can create separate buckets for the orange blue and the green curve click add so now we have created three buckets uh, first one is for the orange curve now we can go pick the orange curve here there we go now that's data for the orange curve. Now we can switch to the blue one. And get the data for the blue curve. Similarly for the green curve, use the color picker. Put it green, click done. Uh, let's, since it's a darker color, we want to make sure we don't pick the axis. We have green. Uh, in this case might want to change the y as we don't want as many points on the y axis that looks pretty good uh, now we can switch between these three and see it for orange blue and green we can also when we view the data we can also switch the data set between orange blue and green uh, the most beneficial thing of doing this is when you export the data as a JSON file. This will now export the data values for all three curves, orange, blue, and green. Uh, you can also import that file back in and resume work at a later time. I will now demonstrate the use of a plot digitizer to do distance measurements on images. For the first example, I want to use a simple map. So click map with scale bar, align axis. Now you want to look for the scale bar and pick two points on this, one and two. So in this case, I'm going to pick one here and one here, which is 200 miles as per the scale bar. Click complete. Now just type 200, oh, 200. The units are optional, but let's put miles here. Now you can skip over to measure distances and add a pair so this is the distance between Delhi and Chennai which is 1087 miles this is of course the straight line distance you can click view and it will show the distance measurements uh, you can also add more such distances between several cities you can also delete some distance measurements or clear everything entirely. You can do a similar thing on a microscope image. Here's a picture of an ant. And again, we'll click the map with scale bar, align axis. Here we have the 500 micron scale. So put first point here, second point, the end of this, click complete is 500 microns now let's skip over to measure distances now if you want to measure end-to-end -end length of this it's about 4453 microns click view you can also do you can measure the neck thickness the size of the head You can also use keyboard to switch between the add and the delete controls.
Mapplotdigitizer can also be used to extract data from polar diagrams. In this example, we have a simple polar diagram and we click polar diagram as the axis type. Now we have to specify three points, one at the center and two at some known locations. Click proceed. So this is where the center is. Uh, I'll be picking two points at 2 and 30 degrees and 3 and 60 degrees. Click complete. 2, 30, 3, 60. Make sure to choose degrees and if the diagram was oriented clockwise, click clockwise. In this case, this is an anti-clockwise standard polar diagram. Click OK. Now we can switch over to the automatic mode and pick the red color. Draw a box. That looks pretty decent. And click run. We can view the data right away. Uh, sort. And sort the data by either R, theta, or just connectivity. And we can just click download CSV to download the file. We now have a ternary phase diagram. These sort of plots are pretty common in chemical engineering and material science. To align this sort of uh, plot, pick the ternary diagram. In this case, you have to pick three points on the corners. So one, two. Again, you can use the keyboard to make fine adjustments. And three, click complete. In this case, this is a normal style ternary diagram with zero on the left and um, 100 on the right side. The range of variables you can pick either 0, 01 or 0, 0200. In this case we will try percentages 0, 0200. Click OK. Now you can hover over a point and now you can see that there are three points available here. So at this particular location we can see that we have 82% uh, MGO 8% K2O and about 9% or so, 8.8% of NA2O. And we can use the automatic mode again to pick the data points. Let's see, create a mask, quick filter. We picked up a little too much, so let's lower these values. It's too low. That might get us what we want. Quick run. Now, most of the points look correct, but in some cases you might want to do a little manual work and add some points. And so on. Once you're satisfied, click view data. Now you should have three columns of data. You can again format the values as you desire. And you can also sort them by the three components, A, B, C. And that's it.